Hey guys, this is the One U server that I built for farming Chia cryptocurrency less than a year ago. It features an RTX A4000 GPU, an Intel X550 10 gig NIC, and an LSI 9200 SAS controller. It's been running absolutely great since I built this. I've barely had to touch it at all, maybe a reboot or two, uh, typically related to drive additions or power outages. Now, less than a year later, it is time for an upgrade already. Of course, what fun would it be if you didn't get to play with new hardware? Uh, so in this video, we're going to rebuild the Chia Farmer in this Supermicro CSC836. This is a 3U chassis. And this video is going to assume you already have an understanding of the Chia cryptocurrency and what it is. So why am I building a new server less than a year later? Well, there are three main reasons why. First off, while this 1U server has been running great since I built it, it is running very, very hot. At the current workload, which I'd estimate is around 60%, the GPU is reporting a temperature of around 75 degrees Celsius under normal operating conditions. Now, when you first start the Chia software uh, and it's, it's going through and inventorying all of your plots, it's still receiving challenges at that time. And then once it completes inventorying your plots, it passes all those challenges through that it has waiting. And at that point, the GPU is just hammered for the first five or so minutes after the initial startup, trying to catch up with all those challenges. At those times when it's at 100% workload is when I see the problem, uh, not really a problem, but more of a concern from my point, the GPU is approaching temperatures of around the low 90s, 90 degrees Celsius. Now these GPUs, this A4000, they're, they're notorious for running hot and it's partially due to the one slot width design. Most GPUs take up two slot widths. This is just one slot width, which is what makes it appealing to me. It's taking up less space in your case. You can see it's got one squirrel cage fan. Some people call them a turbo fan in the back here. Uh, but the outlet space for air here is fairly small. Now, that's not the only problem. It is designed to work in a server. These cards are server cards, but those temperatures are driven higher by the 1U form factor. It's not getting a lot of air circulation in there. In addition to this card being right up against the LSI 9200 SAS controller, which is both blocking air circulation and it's creating some of its own heat. So reason number two is that the workload has increased significantly since I designed this less than a year ago. So I have about 1.5 petabytes of plots and those were originally C8 gigahorse plots and they are now C18 gigahorse plots. So it is compressed further, it gives me more effective space, but it is producing a greater load on the GPU. Third is the Chia filter will be getting reduced here. I think it's in June, it's either May or June around that time frame. Currently one in 512 plots pass the Chia plot filter and it's going to be getting uh, cut in half to one in 256 plots will pass the plot filter. So that's effectively doubling the work that the GPU is going to be doing. And with 1.5 petabytes of Gigahorse C18 plots, one A4000 is not enough. So I need to add a second A4000 GPU and obviously I cannot do that in a 1U form factor. Uh, so this newer case here, the CSE836, is designed to fit full height cards. So I should have no problem fitting two of those GPUs in here. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. You see, I've already taken the old server offline, obviously, because it's sitting here with me. Um, so we're just going to get right into the choice of hardware, put it all together, and I need to get it back online because, as you know, every minute this is down, I could be winning proofs. I am losing XCH that I could be earning. So let's get right to it. So this is pretty much your standard Supermicro 3U case. I do have three fans and I have the back plane. It is the VPN SAS 2-836EL. Uh, it did come with two power supplies here. So they are 80 plus gold. They are at 110 volts, are gonna be 1000 watt. I do wanna to upgrade to 240 volts at some point because I'm told that is more efficient, but I don't have the cabling in place for that just yet. So the plan with this case is going to be to take the 16 drives from JBOD1 and move them into this case along with the motherboard. It didn't make sense to me to consume more rack units simply for the farmer, so I figured I would combine some of the drives and the farmer into one 3U case. Uh, so the power supply cable here, we have our 24-pin ATX, we have an 8-pin for the CPU, and we have a second 8-pin CPU. This is only going to be a single CPU design, so I'm hoping I can use this additional 8-pin to drive the GPU power and then we have a four pin older CPU power connector here. On the top here, we have a CD-ROM drive. We obviously don't need that, um, but we also have a 2.5 inch bay that slips out the side here. This is where the floppy drive used to be. Nobody uses floppy drives anymore. So we're gonna put a 2.5 inch solid state drive in here to host the operating system, the blockchain, and the Chia software. This is the motherboard I selected for this build. This is a Supermicro X10 SRL-F. It is very similar to the X10 SRI-F that I'm using currently. 
However, this one has a few minor differences. Uh, that's minor differences in specifications, but huge differences to me that make this a better choice for this particular project. First of all, this has two X16 slots and the SRI only has one. We also have four additional PCIe 3 lanes available to us because this board has a lesser version of the LAN controller. The SRI has an Intel based controller. I forget what the exact model of that was and that is consuming four of the PCIe 3 lanes. The LAN controller in this particular motherboard is tied in from the south bridge and I think it's on PCIe Gen 2. Uh, and that is seen in this slot located here. On the SRI, this is going to be a PCIe Gen 2 slot. Over here, we have four lanes at PCI Gen 3 speeds. Other than that, this board is pretty much identical to the SRI-F. Uh, this is the CPU I selected. This is an Intel Xeon E5 2623V4. Um, this is a four core, eight thread CPU, 2.6 gigahertz base clock and a 3.2 gigahertz uh, single core turbo. And it has a TDP rating of 85 watts. And then we have our 1U heatsink here. This must have come out of a 1U chassis. So I have this 3U heatsink here that's the same size that I scavenged from a prior uh, project and we'll just use this one instead. So we'll go ahead and get our CPU in place there. Memory is nothing special here. It's 32 gigs of DDR4 at 2133 megahertz. And those will go into the blue slots. And we'll plug in the eight pin CPU power connector and the 24 pin motherboard power connector. We also have this ribbon cable here going back to the buttons and the LEDs on the front of the case. And then we also have our three fan connectors here which go to the fan headers. And then I typically remove cables that I don't need uh, both to improve airflow in the case and I also keep them in a box of spare parts. That way when I do something in the future and I need some cables, I can go and pull them out of my parts box and not have to buy them. So I don't need the SATA or the power cable that goes to the CD-ROM drive. I don't think anybody uses CD-ROM drives anymore. The front facing USB 2 connectors. Again, that's just more cables that are out of the way here. So we need to keep this SATA cable. This is for the uh, 2.5 inch operating system drive. For the solid state drive, I have a Samsung 870 EVO. It's a 500 gig drive. And we'll just mount that in our 2.5 inch tray. That's a neat little drive tray there. So next we have the Intel X550 dual 10 gig NIC. We're gonna put that in the X4 slot. This is an X8 slot that's wired for X4 since this is only an X4 card. And then we have a new SAS controller. So this is an LSI 9217 uh, 4i4e. So what that means, the 9217 part, it's a 9207, but since this is HP's branding, this is an HP branded card, it's a 9217. It's the same card, it's just a 17 because of the HP branding as opposed to the 9207 that is LSI branded. So the 4i4e portion, it means it has one internal SAS port for four lanes and it has one external SAS port for four lanes. So this is great because I can connect this SAS port to my backplane for the drives in this case and then I have my external SAS here to connect downstream to my other JBOD enclosures. And this is a PCIe Gen 3 card. It's a step up from the 9200 that I'm using currently that is a PCIe Gen 2 card. So this is an eight lane card. I'm gonna stick that in the X8 slot that is wired for eight lanes. So here's my first RTX A4000. I'm gonna put that in the first PCIe slot there. And then I have my second RTX A4000 that I just purchased and I'm gonna put that in the second X16 slot. So next I have my SFF8087 SAS cable. I'm gonna plug one end into the back plane and the second end into the SAS controller. And you can see that connection here. And it goes back into the SAS controller. Now I'm going to be careful tying this cable down here such that it's not obstructing that fan. I wish it bent a little more, uh, but it doesn't really bend like I would like it to and I don't want to damage it. Next, we need to get power to our GPUs. One thing that makes these more appealing, in addition to being a one slot with card, is that they only need a six pin PCIe power connector. So I'm hoping that I can use this cable. This is an eight pin CPU input that breaks out to two six plus uh, two pins here. At these being 150 watts each, we're talking about 300 watts, but they should be able to pull some power through the PCIe connection. I believe it's up to 75 watts per card. I do believe, I can find exact specifications for this connector here for the CPU power, but I do believe we are still well within the limitations of this connector 
with two GPUs, two A4000s, factoring in what they can pull from the motherboard. So we're gonna give it a try and I'm certainly going to be monitoring it just to make sure we're staying within those limits. I think we're finally ready to go ahead and power it on. Unfortunately, I don't have the air shroud that goes over this. I thought I had one for an 836. The only one I could find was for the 846, uh, the 4U version, and it just doesn't fit in there the right way. Um, so if anybody happens to have a spare fan shroud for an 836 that you're not using, um, I couldn't find any on eBay that were at the right reasonable price. And for some reason, I've got four of these cases now and I don't have one. So I don't know if I threw some out in the past or what the deal is, but. So we've got IPMI, we've got network, and we have power. Uh, now, while this boots up here, I am running Oracle Linux 9.3. It's a Red Hat based derivative. Uh, I'm not sure how that works since Red Hat's not releasing their source code anymore, but it is supposed to be uh, completely binary compatible. So I did already install this ahead of time. It's a basic minimal installation of Oracle Linux 9.3. It's not the GUI version. It's not the server version of the packages installed. It's just the minimal install. So by default, if you're using Oracle Linux, it will come loaded with the unbreakable enterprise kernel, the UEK. So if I do uname R, you can see it says uh, EL9 Enterprise Linux 9 UEK. You need to load the Red Hat compatible kernel, not the UEK kernel. I can't remember if it was the NVIDIA drivers or if it was the Chia software that requires that, but one of those two did not work with the UEK kernel. So to do that, we're gonna do a grubby dash dash default kernel. And you can see the default kernel is set to EL9 UEK. So then we're gonna do a grubby uh, slash info all grep and grep on VM lin uz. So it's just uh, the beginning of the file name here to see what options we have available. And you can see we have the UEK and then we have the standard kernel. So we're gonna copy the path to the standard kernel here. It is 5.14 update 362. And we're gonna do a grubby dash dash set default and simply paste in that URL. And you should be good to go. It has a confirmation message there and then we'll go ahead and reboot. Wait until that finishes. All right, and it looks like our system is back up here. So let's go ahead and reconnect. And now if we do a uname-r, you can see we're on EL9.3 Red Hat kernel. The UEK part is gone from the file name. So the second thing I wanted to show you, and again, I said I was not going to do a lot of details, but I did want to show you the CUDA installation process because this has taken a little while to figure out for some reason. Uh, so I just navigated to developer.nvidia.com slash CUDA downloads and I'm on Linux 64-bit Red Hat Enterprise Linux. I am on version 9 and I'm going to obtain the local run file. So it's going to give you a path here. So we're just going to copy that path and we're going to do a wget and it's a pretty big file. I think it was around 4 gigs or so. And while that's downloading, about a month ago, I finally got some decent internet hooked up. So I have uh, fiber finally. I've got one gig down and actually technically it's 940 megabits down and that's symmetrical. So it's also 940 megabits up. Uh, before I had a line from coax from Comcast uh, cable and it was 200 down and only 25 up, which was just terrible. So I am loving, loving these faster download and upload speeds. All right, once that finishes, we can do an RPM-I for install and just the file you just downloaded. Uh, I didn't want the run file. I wanted the RPM, the local RPM. Sorry about that. So let's go ahead and do that again. This is what happens when you try to talk and film videos at the same time as remembering how to install this stuff. Now we can do an RPM-I and install. And once that's done, we're going to do a DNF module install NVIDIA-Driver and we're using the Open-DKMS version. And that's going to download a ton of packages. You see it says 295 packages. All right, so that installation has finished. We should be able to do an NVTOP now and see to... Nope, nope, nope. Maybe I have to reboot. So let's go ahead and reboot one more time here. NVTOP. All right, there we go. So we have two 
RTX A4000, you can see here, both are at Gen 3. They are both running at 8X. All right, so I've got one of my drives installed. This is Chia Plots 0101 here, and I've got the Chia software installed. So we're running a proof of space test here. We're gonna farm with a difficulty of 100. We're gonna farm this particular plot, and we're gonna do 500 challenges against it. Um, but you can see they are 100% loaded here, and the power is at 139 watts on each card. So let's see what our result comes out with. Is it done already? Wow, it finished 500 fast. That was crazy. Uh, so at the current filter of 1 in 512, I can uh, farm 5.64 petabytes of plots. Once the filter reduces here in the next couple of months at uh, 1 of 256, I can farm 2.82 petabytes of plots. So that is perfect. These are C18 Gigahorse K32 plots. Now, prior to shutting down that old server, I did run this exact same test with the same plot and the same difficulty and iteration uh, settings. And I came out with a result of 2.72 petabytes at 512 and 1.36 petabytes at 256. So you can see we are about pretty much double. We are pretty much double. All right, guys, so you can see the new 3U server in the rack here. It's been online for about two days. Haven't had any problems whatsoever. Now that I have a spare case, I'm gonna take some time to go through the other two 3U JBODs and rebuild those as well. I've done a bit of consolidating. All of my 10 terabyte drives have been sold off at this point. So there are some empty spaces with the drives mounted inside the case, and I wanna further improve on that design and some airflow uh, improvements as well. So. Otherwise, I don't really see much change on the horizon here. Uh, there have been some hints about a new plot format maybe coming to address some of the compression uh, concerns, concerns around compression there. Um, so that was just something that was mentioned on, I think I saw it on Reddit, that was a screenshot from the Discord chat. Uh, so we'll see what that brings here in the next year or two. But for the time being, uh, this is pretty much where it's at and where I'm going to leave it set. I will link to all the parts I use down in the video description, along with some good sources for drives if you're still looking for any. Otherwise, please hit that like button before you go, and thanks for watching.